Hello fellow treasure hunters, welcome back! A vast amount of time has passed since we last visited our most alluring and indeed most expensive treasure hunt ever undertaken. And although time may pass, and the world continues to sail by upon the horizon, perched within the ferocious and seemingly never-ending water surrounding Nova Scotia, remains our shaft-ridden rock, ever unchanging, our island of oak. She has clung to her secrets with almighty persistence, only ever willing to relinquish her gifts to the very utmost of worthy. We have, upon many occasions, presented evidence, artifacts, and structural anomalies found upon and around the island that for over 200 years has demonstrated to all those involved strong indications of something hiding in this island. During this long break, we have, as always, endeavored to sink investigative fangs into the numerous leads we are inevitably presented with while exploring this web of dead ends and red herrings destined only to create even greater levels of confusion regarding the vast enigma. However, we believe, regardless of this, that we have gotten tantalizingly close to this ultimate secret, which is a piece of information we now strongly believe is still known by some of the most wealthy figures still alive to this day. How Oak Island was originally constructed, when and by who, yet alas, although we have some extremely good possibilities, we still don't know for a certainty what was hidden there. The character known as Martin Frobisher, who is known for creating what is now called the Fool's Gold Mine, some 300 miles from Oak Island, he had apparently mined over 200 tons of iron ore, thinking it was gold. When he returned to England with his bounty, the Crown confiscated the lot. It was they who then claimed that Frobisher, along with 300 expert Cornish miners, had made a catastrophic error in mistaking iron for gold. During our extensive research into the possibility of Martin Frobisher actually being involved in the hiding of a contingency treasure upon the island, in the event of sabotage, we have indeed fallen down a rabbit hole of conspiracy, deceit, and concealed protected truths. The voyage which involved this retrieval of ore was funded by Edward de Vere, the Duke of Oxford. The miners involved were tin miners. This fact in particular is pivotal in arguing Frobisher's original role upon the island. The tin miners of old were notoriously talented at digging tunnel mines looking for seams of tin. The technique created by ancient Polynesian miners, it is indeed a team of men capable of creating such elaborate tunnel systems beneath Oak Island, and although they, along with Frobisher, had incentive to bury possibly many tons of gold there, the main man behind the funding of this mission has somehow come into main focus surrounding this enigmatic sequence of events within Nova Scotia, and also within England just prior to the pit's discovery in 1795. Although this story is too large for one sitting, we will start with a small portion. Edward de Vere was in all possibility the writer of the works of William Shakespeare, and the last of the pedogenic kings of Europe. It was he who had a true treasure to hide, a treasure bestowed upon his family as far back as Ralph de Sudley. Edward de Vere could be seen as the Grail Knight. The reasons why will soon become clear. The lodestone, often overlooked, which rests on the south shore, points to true north, adjusted for magnetic deviation. This equilateral triangle was discovered in 1897, but its significance has been missed for many years. Because of shifts in the Earth's magnetic field, there is still considerable magnetic variation as far north as Oak Island. Since the year 1550, true north indicated by the lodestone has only occurred twice, once in 1620 and once in about 1780. Whoever set this lodestone up had advanced knowledge of astronomy and navigation, very likely acquainted with Sir William Gilbert, Queen Elizabeth's personal physician, known for authoring the scientific treatise on the lodestone. Vere would pass away in 1604, shortly before the initial alignment. Interestingly, Robert Richardson, an experienced petroleum engineer who was a close friend of Bob Dunfield, when questioned regarding the riddle of shafts within the island, mentioned that he always suspected that the design was reminiscent of Egyptian tombs. D.J. Hansen, 
director of the DeVere Foundation, upon hearing this information, began a search to find Bob Dunfield to discuss the possibility of Edward de Vere actually having been buried on the island accompanied by his artifacts de sacred, namely the Holy Grail and most likely so much more, for instance, his secret Shakespearean texts. Bob would reveal photographs taken some years earlier at a depth of 250 feet under the island within a limestone cavern, which has now become known as the Oxford Tomb. Not only was there something resting in this cavern, but Bob as well as Hansen both strongly feel it is a tomb. More precisely, the sarcophagus of a secret king, namely the burial chamber of De Vere. In our next segment, we will be revealing many more pieces of compelling historical evidence to support this amazing assertion now made by numerous well-known treasure hunters and mainstream historians including the connection of Sir Francis to this burial chamber in the most intriguing of forms. There are now many dots beginning to connect in regards to activities upon our island prior to the boy's discovery. Yet, we still feel there is something still being concealed in regards to this treasure buried on Oak Island. A secret we will never give up on finding. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.